Good morning. Good morning and welcome to uh, another uh, day of cooking here from my kitchen to your kitchen at home. Great to have you on board. Uh, great to have you with us and joining us today. Uh, what are we making today? Well, we're making fruit pastries, little fruit tartlets with a uh, rough puff pastry. And in the centre of them, we're going to be doing a creme patissiere, um, a lovely homemade um, custard. Um, so um, my name is Mr. Man and your name is? Millie, my daughter, and together we are going to be doing you the lesson today. Now, uh, if you're watching this uh, Talkie Girls Gram, we've got a few of you coming in now. I can see you uh, coming in there. Brilliant into the room. Well done. Um, if you want to put any live uh, Q&As down the side, you can do down the side of the screen. There is um, a little uh, piece there where you can write any comments. If you're watching this back on YouTube, um, you can write your comments along the bottom there as well. Um, girls, if you're watching this from Talkie Girls Grammar School, which is uh, one of our lessons, um, you can uh, again, watch Watch again, you can uh, watch again on YouTube, you can pause this video, play again, however you wish to. Um, any comments, like I say, run, run down here if it's alive, if it's YouTube, along the bottom. We'd love to see your bakes today, so please feel free to post as many pictures as you want to us um, of how your bakes turn out and how they look today. Okay. Welcome, uh, say, to, to Talking Girls Grammar School. Uh, a few more people joining us in the classroom now. And uh, welcome to everyone who's joining us across the world. Hurrah! Um, so we've had emails from, like I say before, uh, Canada, Africa, um, other schools are using this across the UK. So um, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, Talking Girls Grammar School lesson today. Um, great to see you. Uh, we've got, say, one, two, we've got a few more attendees coming in. Brilliant. Um, so we are going to be starting the lesson. Um, and just make sure you can all hear me. If you just want to ping a, ping a note down to me to the side, just to let me know you can hear me today. Uh, fabulous, got a few of you on already. Excellent, looks like you can hear us and you can see us well. Um, right, so let's get on with, before we start, as with any food lesson, um, we need to get started in the most hygienic way possible. So we need to make sure that we are ready to cook. And for us, um, that means we use a little bit of um, some rules and regs to begin with to remind us of what we need to do. So let me just uh, get that onto um, this screen for you and let's send that one live before we begin. OK, so I'm just sending that one live to you now and you can see um, this is what we do as our starter task today at the beginning of the lesson. We need to get ready for our practical lesson. We need to get yourself ready. We need to get your area ready. We need to collect all your equipment. And we use a little thing called Hattie. Um, we're using this from the Hodder Education Package um, as part of the Exploring Food and Nutrition for Key Stage 3 package that Hodder use. Um, OK, so this is what Hattie stands for. For those who can just a quick reminder for you girls at home and for everybody else who's watching this or back on YouTube. Hattie stands for H, uh, tie your hair back. Or you can wear a hat. Wash your hands. Put an apron on um, to cover yourself. Um, clean your table area. That's a good, especially given that the current situation, make sure your area you're using is nice and clean and safe and hygienic. Um, it's good to you have a tray at hand. Then you can put the next two things on, which is I for ingredients and E for equipment. And we'll go through that one with you today. Um, OK, um, so let's go through everything um, for you uh, today and I'm going to come straight back to me and we'll go straight on with that. Uh, OK, let's go and send the one uh, live. Fabulous. Um, right. So uh, let's let's go through this one. If you want to uh, we'll take a quick little walk over to um, the sink here. Um, so let's get started as you will be doing in your kitchens at home. Um, let's uh, let's get started. So over to the sink here. Um, there we go. You can see us over there um, now. Um, make sure that you are doing this for, as you know well and truly already, 20 seconds is what we are looking for. So um, soap on your hands. Um, obviously, the normal way you might be considering to clean your hands like that, backwards and forwards, backwards and sides. Um, but then you need to go in with the nails, all around those nails. OK, and then we need to go between those fingers. Let's go between those fingers. And then we need to go the back of our hands and between the fingers. OK, back there, round our thumbs. OK, there we go. And uh, and make, don't get our wrists as well. Make sure we properly clean our hands properly. And then you need some hot water. So um, we need to make sure that we've got some hot water going there to clean our hands in. So the normal way, back on our both sides, thumbs, both sides, back of the hands. There we go. Round the wrists. 
Okay, Millie, over to you. Oh, it's a bit of a water on there for you. Here we go. Um, uh, and we're doing that for 20 seconds. So 20 seconds is what we're looking for. Um, when you're watching your hands, think about how many seconds you've got left. Go on, Millie. Yeah, we're going to do that. So we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now, uh, Millie's got longer hair, so she has that tied up. Brilliant. Um, I have no, very little hair, so I don't need mine tied up. So I'm okay um, with that. So we've washed our hands. Um, right, let's get our aprons on, Millie. Roll your sleeves up, aprons on. Make sure you've not got any bracelets or anything on there. Okay, I've got my my apron here as well everybody let's get that one on i've got my chef whites uh from school here from my food teacher center chef whites and we're just going to get those on as well um make sure you are ready to go and you've got all the protective equipment you uh, need and um, like i say these ones will be available um at the these videos will be available for you to watch along with all the other videos that we've done we we're just going through them this morning we've got quite a few videos on there at the moment haven't we so um although you're this is a, a year nine lesson here it's the last of the rotation um for the year nine practicals um, so a bit of a fun one to do to recap some of the learning that we've done on um, flour, flour processing, gluten gliding, um, what's in the flour, we're going to be going through that. But if you wanted to watch some year 10 lessons, um, they're on there as well. My year 10 lessons are on there and the year 7s and 8s and all the other lessons you can watch if you want to do some more cooking at home. You can do. Right, let's get my apron on and uh, we are nearly ready to go. All right, let's, let's come on over a minute. Let's go, go back over to the uh, workstation which is already clean and ready to go. Okay. Um, now, today, um, like I say, we're going to be making some fruit tartlets. Oh, my sleeves up as well. It's quite hot today as well, isn't it? Um, we're going to be making some fruit tartlets today. Um, when to, to make these fruit tartlets, we're going to be starting with a pastry. Um, we're going to be doing a rough puff pastry today. Um, so uh, we could be doing a puff pastry. Um, we don't think that there's some recipes. We did, I think we did puff pastry before, didn't we, with the year 10s? So if you wanted to have a look at that, we're doing rough puff pastry today. Um, and the idea with the rough puff pastry um, is we're going to be making a laminated pastry. That's a layered pastry. Okay. So there's going to be layers of fat and there's going to be layers of flour in there. So we're going to be uh, doing uh, both of those and then we're going to be watching out. So we're we'll touching a bit of the food science involved in what we're doing today as well. Um, so let me just get the uh, recipe card up for you. Here we go and uh, send live. So we've just done our uh, preparation, which was our mise en place. And um, so we've done our preparation side of things. And then after the preparation of mise en place, here we go into our fruity tartlets. OK, now the fruity tartlets, we're going to be doing here 150 grams uh, to 80 grams of fat. Now, that's quite a high fat percentage there. Um, and uh, and that's that, that, you know, sweet treats, occasional um, sweet treats are fine as part of a balanced diet. We do need fat in our in our diets. That's an essential part of uh, what we need to eat for a few different reasons. Um, a third of our brain is actually um, fat, um, right sorts of fats, though you need your omegas uh, in there um, to the right sort of fat. But you do need fats and fats are essential for uh, other things as far as protection of our body, uh, warmth and insulation. Um, so there are other reasons why we do need fat, but in small quantities in um, our, our diets. OK, um, then it says a lemon juice. And we'll, if you've not got any lemon juice in our lockdown larders, that is fine at the moment. We've not got any uh, lemon juice left. We've got some arriving tomorrow. Um, but if you haven't got any lemon juice, it's not going to be too essential. Um, if you're using a plain flour, and I'll talk about different flours in a minute and why and where for of those. We're going to be doing some folding, some uh, folding and some moving around and um, and get, getting all those bits and pieces together. Then when we made the pastry, we're going to let the pastry rest or chill for 10, 20 minutes, um, maybe a little bit less than 20 minutes, probably about 15. Um, then we're going to uh, make up what we call a creme pâtissière, which is a French word, obviously, um, and it's a it's a, a pastry cream and it's one we're going to be using. It's like a custard. We're making a fresh custard to go into the middle of these. We're going to be baking these off with lots of different types of fruit and we'll talk about different fruits in a moment. OK, so let's uh, let's go back to us um, and go back to uh, uh, there we go and send live right um so oh, and it's just getting some of the equipment together that I had on the board there so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need 150 grams of flour now um, uh, if any questions or uh, you've got down the side here just say just put the questions down the side you can pause us play again if you're watching um, on live um, obviously you can do that on YouTube as well um so the pl the flour well, I'm going for a plain flour here um just a just bog standard um plain plain flour 
um, for making the pastry. Now, different sorts of flour are going to work, but not maybe such a, to such a great extent. You, you've only got uh, what you've got in your lockdown riders will we'll make do. Self-raising flour is, um, won't create uh, as good a, um, a fix there. We want to be creating some gluten today, um, which is a bit of an odd thing for pastry, because normally with are doing a short cross pastry, you wouldn't want to be um, really developing that. But we want to develop some gluten today, and with the self-raising flour, it won't be as, as good a development as uh, plain flour on that one. Um, you could use a strong uh, strong flour, which would obviously be able to get more gluten from it. Um, that way, that would, that would work. And we do have an, an element where, although we're not going to be properly kneading it, um, when we're folding it, we are going to be developing the gluten into it. So um, I'd stay away from a soft self-raising flour and move towards the plain or a stronger one um, as you're going along to make this what these pastries for you. OK, um, so that is the flour. Now, um, I had some uh, messages last night saying, ah, I got no flour. That, that's that's OK. Uh, now, I've got for those people I've um, if you're watching again at the moment, I'm going to be taking some uh, tasks for you afterwards, but that I've got for you for this one. Um, but if you're not, I haven't got any flour, we're using our flour sub school supplier for flour. So uh, well worth contacting your commercial suppliers locally who uh, would normally be supplying restaurants, schools and the like. Um, a lot of them are now doing deliveries to home, which is what we did when we got like what was it, about 24 bags of, of flour and um, 180 eggs and, and all sorts turned up the other week, which is enough to do us and the whole estate around us here, um, which is great. Um, and it's very, very cheap. It's only about 60 cents for a for a bag of, bag of flour. So well worth doing, do next day delivery. If you're watching this on YouTube nationwide, they do it, do it bid food is what we're using. That's B-I-D. F O O D bid food and they will do home deliveries next day home deliveries and they've got loads of flour eggs milk um, everything that you might be struggling to get perhaps at, at, at domestic supermarkets so well worth doing that or a lot of people said to me go to the pubs um, um obviously pubs uh, that might be closed and if they're in work walking distance of your house and part of your regular daily exercise, you might be able to email them in advance and they can leave something outside for you to collect. So um, bread, um, we've got that from our local pub. Um, the pub down the road here um, is supplying that because they've been having deliveries to themselves and they're supplying that to the village. So um, different hints and tips there to get some food during this lockdown larders, for your lockdown larders during this uh, lockdown period. Okay, um, now let's get on with some actual cooking. So what we've got here is we've got 150 grams of flour. Uh, uh, well done, Millie, uh, as prepared earlier. So 150 grams of flour. Um, now we're going to um, sieve that um, into a bowl. So let's get a bowl. Right, here. here we go. Um, Millie's just going to sieve that. I'm going to move the camera down so you can see us both um, a little bit better and see our work area. Um, I'll, I'll get back. So Millie's just going to sieve um, the flour in there. Now sieving the flour into there, let's get some food science going on here. I love a bit of food science. Let's put some food science on my wall, whiteboard behind us here. Food science. Uh, um, there we go. Can you read that one? Not quite, so you can't quite see it. OK, uh, food science. Yes, do you want to just alter the lights over there? There we go. Um, yes, I think we can see that a little bit better. Uh, can you read that one? A little bit better. I will write it and I will explain it as we're doing it. Um, so we've got some the food science. The first bit of food science we're just going to put up there is going to be aeration. OK. Aeration. OK, so aeration, we are going to be putting some air into this pastry. OK, so we're going to be aerating it. So Millie has just done some aeration. She's just been aerating the flour as well as breaking down the flour into its ear, into much smaller parts to make a much finer flour. Now, into that, she is going to put some that. Oh, yeah, again, we've got, loads, got 40 blocks of this stuff. Um, really, really cheap um, through commercial suppliers. So again, if you're struggling to get hold of um, things at the moment, that might be a good way of doing it. So um, we've got butter here. Now, this is a, a cold butter so I've got a cold butter or baking fat here uh, and, and then with this one we're going to be putting 80 grams in there so if you can measure us out 80 grams if you haven't got scales at home and you're struggling to thinking how can I measure out these um, so for the flour that's around about 100 grams uh, and then we'll double half will be your size hands um, for the fat um, you'll often see on the outside very helpfully they've actually got the number down the side there so you can work out roughly where we're going for to get those together so if you want to do that one can you just grab the and put that one on, um, onto the airplane that's we get so it's inspiring sorry there's lagging a little bit on the internet there so we just uh, switch off um, the devices there on that one um, 
And uh, yes, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting into that. Now, what is the percentage of fat to flour when we're doing these pastries? Um, it can be really up to almost one to one. You can almost have one to one. We're um, anywhere between um, half to, to one to one on this ratio. Um, so we're doing a half ratio. We're going to try and keep it a little bit healthier, but you can go full fat to flour on that one. Well done. OK, um, so if you want to measure those ones out, that would be great. Uh, let me just make sure we got all those switched off. Uh, do, 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 do. What we're doing? She's doing that. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so we measure putting in the flour into the um, into the into here. Now um, we want to make this flat fat before we put it in there. We're going to want to make this um, not teeny tiny small. If you can remember back to when we did short cross pastry, we tried to make the bits of fat teeny tiny small. And what we did is we were trying to coat as much of the flour with waterproof jackets of fat. That process of making the fat, cutting it in and rubbing it in really, really small was what we called shortening. OK, and that process um, um, retired the development of the gluten because it's pour, forming little waterproof jackets over little bits of flour. The flour can't get wet and it's when the flour gets wet, we start forming gluten. So for the short cross pastry, let's talk about shortening there. For the short cross pastry, when we talked about shortening, we wanted to buy, make, get the butter to form waterproof jackets. We don't want that to happen here. So we're going to keep the butter quite big and chunky. And in fact, when we make a uh, puff pastry, we keep the block of butter as one solid block of butter and we just shape it or flour around it each time. With this one, it's a rough puff, it's sort of an in-between. It's not as many laminated, as well laminated and takes as long as a puff pastry, but it's far more laminated obviously than a short crust. So it's just kind of a middle of the road rough puff. So shortening, which is the one you've done in year seven, when you were younger, when you're making jam tarts, that sort of thing. The shortening one, we want very little gluten. OK, so we want little gluten. Opposite true with this one. We're doing a rough puff. We want the gluten, we want more gluten. And let's just get touch on that for as a reminder, gluten is made of two things in the flour, gliadin and glutenin. Together, when you put water with them, make gluten. So you can see for the rough puff pastry, we're gonna need to get water there so we need to add the water there so let's put the water there we need the water to get to the flour that's the flour to make the gluten so we don't need that butter we don't need the butter to be shortened and small we want to keep it as big as we can so millie has just done this one let's have a look um, um let's have a look at what you've done here we've got big chunks of butter which is brilliant. Big chunks of butter and into the bowl, the big chunks of butter go. Really, put the big chunks of butter into our bowl. Perfect. Wonderful. Big chunks of butter in the bowl. Um, so that's our pastry done. We'll just get that into the oven. No, no. We need to bind all those ingredients together, okay? And we need to turn, get that gluten development. So to get gluten development, what do we need to add to the flour? Water. We need to add water. Well done, Millie. Um, so here we go, Millie. Um, there is it. She's just gone running across the kitchen. I've already prepared it. Here we are, Millie. Ah, we're getting the spoon. Well done. Um, now, well, we're going to be making the uh, glu doing the gluten development there. Um, so as we're doing the gluten development, um, we're going to gradually add a tablespoon at a time. We're going to be doing about well, five tablespoons at a time. Um, Remember with all these things, whenever you're cooking, it's much easier to uh, add the water slowly. Um, you can't really take it away. Uh, OK, so we're going, what we're going to do now is she's just going to add about five tablespoons of ice cold water into there. Um, why are we using ice cold water? Yeah, the butter. Warm water would melt the butter. Warm water would melt the butter. Of course it would. That's being me being silly. Um, so as Millie said, she's going to be putting in there some ice cold water into there. Water and flour makes what? Gluten. 
Perfect. Water and flour makes gluten. And they because it uses the two things, combines two things that are in the flour already, gliadin and gluten in, and it makes them into gluten. So we are going to basically cover the fat with gluten. OK, um, how many five, I think. Five. You've done five. All right. So if you want to just start to stir that together. Now, it says on the recipe, lemon juice. It says a tablespoon of lemon juice. That just helps to develop that stretchy gluten. OK, if you haven't got it, it's all right. We can do it with the water in there as well. The water will do, do that one. So we're just going to um, stir it until the butter and the flour have formed one dough ball. We're making a gluten paste to glue the big lumps of butter together. OK, that's what we're doing at the moment. Um, so what's what's going on now? Why gluten and gliadin? Well, why, what happens when they come together? What are the properties? What's going on? You might be asking. Well, that's very, very interesting. So let's, let's have a think of this. Gliadin and glutenin both have their own separate properties. To remind you of this one before, we used two separate things. We used a stretchy balloon in class and we used some um, trump putty, the ones where you put your thumb in and it makes those horrible trumping noises. Um, OK, um, now those two things have different properties. One is stretch, stretchy and elastic and one is plastic. So when you put your thumb in it, it's going to be squeezed into a shape, but then it'll squeeze the other way. OK, so you can shape and mould it. So we've got one that's shaping and moulding return to its original state one that is stretchy and elastic and flicks back to the other one so it's plastic and elastic two properties of the gluten the, the gliadin and the glutenin put them together this gluten has both those properties it's both stretch and elastic it is both got the properties of gliadin and the properties of glutenin when we add the water to it and gluten is both stretchy and elastic and that is what's going to happen to combine everything together how are we doing um. all together Right, nearly there. Uh, OK, so we're going to add a little bit more water in there, just a little bit at a time. Just keep going a little bit at a time until that's all gone. Just keep that pouring in the measuring jug there until we've got all that together. All righty, just pouring all of those bits together. OK, uh, now uh, some of that, we've got pastry at home. We've already got, yes, if you've already got uh, a puff pastry at home, then we can go straight on to this bit. Um, obviously, we're just going to make do with what you've got at home. But well, the idea is we want to try and make our own pastries today. And we're making little Danish pastries today. Laminated pastries. Now, what does it mean by laminated pastries? Well, laminated pastry is where we sandwich fat and flour, fat and flour, fat and flour, fat and flour, fat and flour. And we're going to squeeze it all together into this pastry. Very thin pastry with all these layers in. And what's going to happen when you start to bake it, those layers are going to start to come apart and you're going to end up with the wonderful flakiness, which is the flaky pastry going on there. So um, we're just going to combine all, all those aspects together. We've got it all nearly. It's coming together into a ball slowly. Yeah. OK, a little bit more cold water into that one. We're going to gather the uh, all into one dough. And as we gather it into the dough, we're then going to start doing our folding to create those individual layers. Now a short crust pastry, if you have any pastry left over at the end, you just roll it in and you might, if you're making biscuits or tarts, you might roll it back into a ball and then cut it out again. Um, you can't do that with this one. OK, this is a laminated pastry. So you've got all those different layers. If you just try and um, scrunch them all up, all those layers are going to be all over the place. So we're going to create individual layers going on there um, of, of, in our laminated pastry. And we're nearly there. It looks like we're nearly all combined. Just a tiny bit more. There we go. And we're just going to keep stirring it. So we've got massive lumps of butter in there, glued together with the gluten. Now, uh, interesting fact here, both gluten and uh, glue that you were used to find in tins, gluten, gluten, um, both come from the same, from the Latin word to stick. You know, so it, it is coming from the same, the same word, the same derivative word there. It's quite an interesting one. I thought that was, that was an interesting fact that we had. I think that's going to be about it. What do you think? I think it's all pretty much stuck. Yeah, that's it. Good. All right. So what we've got now is we have got one glutinous uh, mess of with flour and butter in here. Um, and I'm just going to get that one out of the works of this. It doesn't look like a proper dough ball at the moment. All you can see is lumps of butter sticking out all over the place. So um, let me just, I'm just do one last little bit just to glue those last bits together. OK, um, now. We're going to roll this out before we start folding. Now, again, rolling pins, lockdown line. What do we use instead of a rolling pin, Millie? What can we use? Glass bottle. You can use a glass bottle. If you've got an old glass milk bottle, um, that's fine. We can use that one and we can glue it, to glue it all together. All right, there we go. So let's get that dough out of the work surface. And it's an odd mix. 
I don't know if you can quite see that on the camera. Let me just get that one down. Um, it's an odd looking mix here. It's a not quite sticking as it should do, and it's got large lumps of butter sticking out of it. That is absolutely fine. What we're going to do is we're going to very delicately, he says delicately, we're going to press this one into a rectangular uh, brick. OK, and we're going to press it into a rectangular brick just like that. Uh, I'm going to use my rolling pin. Oh, glass bottle. We can use a rolling pin. We've got a rolling pin here. Here we go. We can use it. Um, remember, with these ones, you need, Millie? Flour. Flour, absolutely. We don't want it to be sticking to everything. And uh, we'll just put a little bit of flour on the top here. We're going to be using quite a bit of uh, that today. So we're just going to roll that, put that flour on the top, put the flour underneath. Oops, it's falling apart already. And what I want you to do is to roll Millie uh, into a uh, rectangular brick. OK. There we go, coming up. Press it in one direction if you can. How about to stop there? So we've kind of got a rectangular brick going on there. You can shape it more. Now it's important that it does form a shape here. So if it's not, just use your fingers just to push it into that rectangular shape. OK, um, so once you've gathered it together into um, a brick shape like that, um, we need to sort of mark three equal portions. Oh, we've got some maths going on here. Um, we're going to move it into thirds. So can you just uh, just very lightly score that one into th three different sections? See, I'll take the rolling pin. There we go. So they can see it on the camera. OK, so we've now got a line there and a line there that Millie's just scored into that one. Oh, brilliant, OK. Now, what we're going to do now is once you've moved, marked the three equal parts, we're going to fold the far third towards us. So top third down, that's it. And then we're going to fold um, the nearest third over the top. OK, so we're creating like a tent of air. We've trapped the air in there, we've trapped up layers. Now, you might be able to see now from the camera that we have now got the first of our sandwich layers. So we've got the first of our sandwich layers there, one, two, three layers going on there. Now at this point, once you've done that, you've put the top down, bottom up, we're going to turn it 90 degrees. OK, and we're going to roll it into that rectangle again. Make sure you've got flour on your rolling pin and we're going to be rolling that one out. Try and get in one direction. There we go. Just try and push it out. There we are. That's it. Pulling out to one direction, so it's like a long rectangle. Perfect. There we have this in the camera there. Okay. Now what will happen is you might start to see little spots where the butter is just starting to come out a little bit. So don't worry about that. We're just going to have a little bit of flour on those bits anymore. Oh yeah, a little bit there. Um, any bits where there's flour coming out, and just give you a little, a little check that it's not sticking to your work surface as well. That's fine. All right, then we're going to do the same as we did do before. So tops down, top third down, bottom third up, squash it down, turn it 90 degrees. All right. Now, what we'll, to find this easier, once you turn it 90 degrees, so to stop any more butter from oozing out, if you seal it both ends, so squash it that end, and then squash it the other end before you start rolling it out into the rectangle, you might find it easier that the bits don't fall out. So. And he's just going to do it. Try and push in one direction. There we go. That's it. All right. Nice even one. So we've got nicely pressed at this end. Let's try a bit more pressure at this end. Perfect. Wonderful. So again, tops down, bottoms up. And we fold it and then turn it 90 degrees. Push it down, seal it, both ends. Perfect. And then Millie's just going to roll that one out again. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of butter coming out. If it's stopped, if any butter's come out, just stop midway through. Grab yourself a little bit of flour and sprinkle it over wherever the flour is sticking out. Don't forget to check underneath. Butter. butter, sorry. Don't check underneath that there's no butter coming for it sticking it to the work surface. No, nope, we're doing okay. All right. Carry on then. Um, now, how many times do we need to do this one? Well. Um, it'd be lovely to think we can get about 100 layers in here. Um, that's not 100 times though, because if you think about it, what we're doing is that each time we're doing this, we're folding in another three layers in each time. So um, you're not going to need to do this 100, 100 times to get 100 layers in here. 
Now, a lot of people, restaurants nowadays still um, don't do this in this way anymore and just go and buy it in. But it's still a fantastic skill to be able to show. And you're going to end up with a beautiful um, pastry here when you've done it this way. So we're just um, just getting to the stage now where we're getting it's a lot smoother. It's a lot easier to roll out now. Yeah. Yeah. So as you start doing it, it's going to become easier to roll out. It's going to become a lot um, easier to be able to manage. There we go. OK. And again, if you do that one. So top down bottom up, turn nice squeeze, and then seal at both ends. There we go. And then we just roll it out. So you don't, so you don't need to do it that many times to get that many um, pieces going on there. Just checking for comments there as well. Um, now in a factory, they've obviously got machines that do not do just this now, and they'll roll it really, really fast, and they can get like a thousand layers into um, their individual pieces. I'm just going to turn my, my, my book there while I'm really doing that one. So yeah, in a factory nowadays, you can actually get machines that do this whole folding, and that's great. If you're buying a shop for puff pastry, you'll find that's been, that won't be done by hand. That'll be done by, by a factory, the machine that literally folds it, folds it, folds it, folds it, squashes it, folds it, folds it, folds it, folds it, squashes it. Uh, okay, and, and that manages to do it really, really quickly to get your um, your laminated pastry going on there. The same way that you might think of, think of a good laminated, a proper true lamination one like a croissant would be a laminated pastry there with um, the fat and flour all sandwiched into that one. Okay. Now, while Millie is doing this, she's also actually kneading and working the gluten. Um, although without actually, we don't, we're not going to actually need it, but the process of folding it each time and pressing it down and rolling it in really hard is going to be developing that gluten more and so that's stretching all the way around that butter, those lumps of butter, and that's going to form the structure of our pastry there. Okay, well done. Um, that's going to form all the structure that we need inside um, our pastry piece there. How many times you done? Ten. Ten times, okay. So how many layers is that? Thirty. Thirty layers, that's right. So we've got about 30 layers going on at the moment. Um, what's the minimum? Uh, good question. Um, I would say you probably want to be at a minimum of 15 um, times doing this one. So 15 times three. <laughs> That's right, Millie, it's 45. Yeah. Uh, it's 45 <laughs> layers of, in the pastry there. It goes in, goes, goes in, goes in um, and when we put it in, then we cook it off. Now, um, you can see there it's actually starting to get a little tougher now to actually start to do because each time she's doing it, the gluten, like I say, is what is elastic and plastic. So it's actually starting to, now the gluten's being developed, it's starting to push back against Millie's rolling. And so it's actually pushing back about it. So you will find it starts to get a little bit tougher. You're going to put a little bit more energy in. But what you will also find is the butter won't, will no longer be starting to seep out. It'll be well and truly sealed into those layers. But the um, each time the gluten is going to try and push back against you. Um, in this one. So when we leave it to rest, what we're doing is we're going to let that uh, gluten um, just relax a little bit um, before we start to make our tartars. And also uh, we're going to be doing it in the fridge. Why are we going to do it in the fridge? Maybe? What's the point of putting it back in the fridge to rest it? Yeah, exactly, so the butter doesn't melt. And in fact, the reverse is going to happen. The button's going to, the butter's going to start to harden off again. Um, so um, that's why we rest it in the fridge there. OK, so that's why we let's do it. Now that difference, oh, let's put, throw a bit of food science in there. That difference between how the butter reacts and melts uh, in the different temperatures is what we um, term plasticity. Now, plasticity, I'm going to wipe that one on there, there as well, plasticity. Um, I don't know if you can quite see that, but you might have to move to the side. Plasticity. Now, plasticity is um, the different states in which fat we call fat being at room temperature. So it could be a liquid or it could be a solid. So if you think of a fat that's a liquid, we're looking at an oil. And um, if you're looking at a fat that's solid, then we're looking at something like butter or lard. Um, and now, that's because of their melting points. Okay, So some have high melting points, some have low melting points. But whether they're melted or not at room temperature, um, uh, it's this whole thing where we talk about plasticity with fat. So um, we can cram a bit more food science into that one as well there. That's good. I like a bit of cramming as much food science into our practicals as possible here. And um, uh, year nine, when you come to be doing this for GCSE, we'll be talking about all these key terms in a little bit more detail for you. Just a little bit of a snippet in there, trying to get some more food science into what we're doing for you. You okay there, Millie? Yeah. How many times are we on now? Um, just about two, six. Uh, 17. 17. Okay, fabulous. 
Um, so we're going to get that one in the cold fridge. Now, if you're thinking about um, if you were doing this professionally in a restaurant, I did mention that um, if you're in, say, Paris, which is where the French kit, um, are, are, are renowned for having developed this type of pastry. Uh, but in a French um, restaurant, you, you, they actually have some of their best pastry restaurants. They actually have a room set aside for making these pastries in. Um, and it's a chilled room. It's like a fridge room. So you go in there to ensure that your butter stays at that solid temperature throughout the whole time you're doing it. Um, so it keeps the room cold. You go in there and it's cold and chilled when you're actually doing it. So it's like working in a fridge. And they do it on a cold marble surface as well, just to keep that um, that temperature down and to keep that butter uh, solid at the temperature which it's being um, used in. And let's say that whether it's turned starts to melt, it's called it's called term plasticity. Right, how are we doing there? 19. 19. Okay, uh, people at home, how, how many layers are we up to there? Can you, do you want to just message me down the side there and let me know how many layers you've got up to so far? That'd be good to know. Um, and any shout outs you want to do, that's fine. I can do that while we're doing this as well. OK, might need a bit more flour. It's starting to stick on the bottom there a little bit and just see that one on there. Um, so we just put a bit more flour on there. Fabulous. Uh, once we've done this, we're going to say chill it in the fridge. And then once we've chilled it in the fridge, we're then going to get it, get start making our creme patissiere. The creme patissiere is the custard that we're going to be putting into that. So we're going to be using um, some eggs, some beautiful vanilla in there. Um, it's a vanilla bean paste, which I talked to you about um, there. It's a wonderful yellow, uh, yellow, sorry, yellow, not yellow, horrible stuff, yellow. That's the, with a lovely dark uh, vanilla paste, um, which I'll talk about in a moment. Let's go into it. But if you haven't got vanilla paste, then try and go for a vanilla extract rather than a vanilla flavouring, um, if you can. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot better for you, and I'll tell you why that is in a moment when we put these together. OK, are we nearly there? Yeah. Good. How many layers we have now? 20? No. How many more have we got to go to 20? 22. 22. 22 layers, which is 20, not 22 layers, it's 22 times, that is? 20 is 60. 60. 66. 66, of course it is, 66. Yeah. Now, we have now got our pastry, 66 layers in there. I'm happy with that one. We'll go with the 66 layers. Um, what we're going to do now is going to wrap that in a little bit of um, uh, paper, of paper there, and we're just going to put that one into the fridge while we make our filling and our fruit filling. Okay. There we go. Over to you. And into the fridge. So in the fridge, what's going to happen is the gluten is going to get a chance to relax a little bit. All the gluten that's stretched all the way around our butter um, and that's formed the individual layers there of butter, flour, butter, flour, butter, flour. And the butter itself that will have gone, um, been heated up during that process and will have got warmer, will then um, start to get the opportunity to then harden off again. Brilliant. All right. Time to go make some custard then, shall we? Yeah. Um, so we're going to go make some custard now. Um, so we're going to go over to the stove. Um, we're going to be putting in, we're going to be, but before we do that, should we get the, we get the ingredients together first yeah. before we do that one? So um, we're going to be putting in um, two egg yolks. So we need to get two egg yolks. We've got a big bowl here for this one. Um, two egg yolks. Do you want them to separate or should I separate? Yes. I'll separate. Okay. Should we both have a go? Yeah. All right. So we're going to be putting the uh, the yolks is what we're going to need. We're going to save the whites. So we're going to be using those to uh, do a little bit of an egg wash over the top of the pastries before they go in the oven. So don't throw them away. We'll try and use the whole lot here. So in we go then. So we're going to be putting the, um, the yolks into our big bowl. So let's see that on the camera. So we'll put the whites in here. And I'm just going to keep the, there we are, nice and gooey. Just going to keep the yolk, so yolk out. One yolk into there. Okay, should we do the other one? Do you want to have a go? Yeah. So Millie's going to have a go here as well. Try and keep the yolk in there. Down, and then you can fish the yolk out of your hand. Uh, all the whites just go into there. Obviously, the whites aren't whites yet. That's because they've not been denatured. The process has not been denatured or coagulated. Talk about that one another lesson. There we go. Yolks are in there. Uh, and that's no yolk. Uh, you've done a cracking job, Millie. Thank you. Uh, she's really a bit of an expert in the kitchen. You're having an exciting time. Yeah. I'd uh, go and wash your it's hands there. Excellent. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> right, so we've got our egg yolks in there. Two egg yolks are going to be putting in there. Now, um, in with the two egg yolks, we're going to be putting 50 grams of sugar. Millie's going to go and grab the whisk. Do you want to use the electric whisk or the hand whisk? You want to use the electric whisk, of course you do. Um, so you're going to go and grab the electric whisk from the other room then. Hand whisk? Electric whisk. Go and grab whatever you want. They're in the other room. Um, so Millie's just going to go to go and grab the uh, the whisk from the larder. Um, and um, uh, while we do this one, so in with this one, let's say we're going to be putting the yolks and 50 grams of sugar into here. So two yolks and 50 grams of sugar. You got it all, Millie? Oh, okay. I'll. No. I'll do that one. Can you come back over here? You start measuring out 50 grams of sugar to go into there, okay? I'm going to take take these all over for later. So Millie's just going to weigh, weigh out 50 grams of sugar. You got the sugar? There we are. There's a the little sugar. You sort places. I'll go and grab those on the top shelf there. Everyone, what are you doing, Millie? I'm putting sugar into a bowl. Um, 52. Oops, there we go. I'm going to squeeze past me. Come out there a minute. There we go. So, in you get, I'll come back. You can go back. There we go. 50? Yeah. Brilliant. Now, we've got both sorts here, so you can use um, a hand whisk if you want to. You've got a hand whisk there, or if you prefer to, as Millie prefers to, she likes to go whizzy whizzy with the um, the uh, hand, the electric whisk. So plug that one in down there, and we'll get going with that one. This one, it, so you can that one back. There we go. And we're going to whisk those all up. We're going to do some more of that aeration. Hurrah! We like a bit of aeration. Um, okay, sugar into there. There we go. Fabulous. Um, and, you know, these are great things to be able to catch the air in. The sugar is going to be good with the egg there, and it's going to be able to, can, going to, be able to good at doing that one. Yeah. There we go. Get that one all really up together. A bit like when you're, you know, when you're putting your, um, your butter and your sugar when you're making your cakes. And we did this one yesterday, didn't we? We made some cakes yesterday. Yeah. There we go. We made a food mistake for a food science. Food science? For a science. Food science. Okay, all done. Nice to tell one Okay. So in with that one, we've now got um, the... Um, egg and we've got the sugar all mixed up together. All right, can you all oh, yeah, good show, show everyone on the TV there what's going on. Um, now, once you've whisked your two eggs with the sugar, um, it should be lightly thickened. So we've got light, lightly thickened. Now we're going to be putting in there 10 grams of sugar. So it has taken on board a light, a light, much lighter color there. So we're going to add in there 10 grams of sugar. So if you want to measure out 10 grams, sorry, 10 grams of sugar, 10 grams of flour. Um, uh, you're going to get in there 10 grams of flour into that and we're going to mix it up. While she's doing that, I'm just going to give it a bit more of a whisk. You done? Yep. Wait a minute. Okay. Yep, we're going to put in there 10 grams of flour into there. Fabulous. Now um, we're going to stir that in. We don't want to be, um, we don't want to develop, develop, develop the gluten too much. But if you just get your spoon there, um, get your spoon there. Fab, fabulous. Just going to stir that one, stir that flour into there, just so it's combined in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a thickened creme pâtissière, a thickened custard. Now to thicken it, we're going to be doing two things. Um, we're going to be adding um, some um, heat which is going to um, set the egg. So if you think about when you cook an egg, what happens to the liquid egg when you cook it? It goes to a solid. Turns to a solid. And what that is, is that's uh, denaturing. That's the long chains of amino acids inside the protein. Uh, denaturing, they're all coming apart and then they're setting to a solid. So that's one thing that's going to happen. The next thing that's going to happen is we've got flour in there. Now, remember when we did a sauce essence before, what's going to happen is that flour is going to, the starch inside the flour is going to expand with a liquid, heated liquid, and then it's going to set and gelatinize. So we've got uh, gelatinization and we've got denaturing and coagulation to set this in there. I'll write this up on the board in a moment. Right, 
So what we do need to add then, uh, because that's not very hot at the moment, is it? No. We need to add something that's hot to this. So we're going to take this bowl over to something that's hot. And the thing that's going to be hot is going to be 175 millilitres of milk. Um, and we're going to be putting 175 millilitres of milk with some vanilla, bring it up to the boil. Um, and then what we're going to do is when it's brought up to the boil, we're going to pour it onto this egg mix. So we're going to actually pour it onto the egg mix um, and then return the mix back to the pan, heat it up again, thicken it and let it cool. OK, so that's what we're going to do now. So Millie, if you want to take that one over to the to, to that. Right, are we ready? Yeah. Not ready yet? Oops, shut the door there. There we go. I'm just going to grab a spoon there. Now we need to, to we need to get 175 millilitres of milk. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, so Millie here is on the, uh, I've got the stove here. We can see, push that one back a bit so you can see there. There's the stove. Now we put the handle. So the handle is pointing out, okay? It's not pointing towards her, but it's likely to hurt her. It's pointing out over the top of the work surface, all right? So it's not gonna hurt anyone there. Um, and we're now gonna heat up 175 milliliters of milk. Um, I'm gonna put some vanilla in there, heat it through, okay? So that's, um, and we're gonna, once we've heated it through, we're gonna add it to our egg and flour mix. And then we're going to put it back in the pan and whisk it up until it's um, we've got a beautiful custard. So let me just get the milk. Um, get some milk in there. And some vanilla. OK, so we're going for 175 millilitres. So uh, there we go. Let's put it for that one in. There we go. 175 millilitres of milk. And in that goes, and then you need to stir that through, Millie, put it onto a, a, me, a medium heat. OK, so we've got in there 175 millilitres of um, the milk there, and um, she's just going to stir that one through and heat that through in there. So the milk, going to heat it up. That's going to go into the egg. There we go, we've got the egg mix just in the, on the side there. That's going to go into our egg mix. Um, and that's going to, as it goes into the egg mix, we keep stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, and back into the pan there and heat it through. And that will form our beautiful creme patissiere um, custard, homemade custard, yeah, um, um, which is exactly what we need to be doing today. Now, the next thing I said while she's doing that is I said to get some, pay, some beautiful um, vanilla. So I'm just going to squeeze this, the very last bit of my vanilla. I need to go and get some more of this. Um, but our wonderful supplier has said she's going to leave some out for us to go when we go on our next walk, which is just around the corner from here. Um, this is a um, little pod vanilla and it is mm, absolutely delicious. I'm not going to touch that one again, but it is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is, and I don't know if you can quite see it on the camera there. I'm just going to have a see if you can see it. This is like a dark black colour. Do you want to pour that one in? Um, it's a dark black colour. It's the proper colour of vanilla. And you should be using real vanilla as much as you can do um, for a paste like this. I say Little Pod, that's local to us here in Devon. You can get it across the nation. So if you're watching this back on YouTube, you can get it all over the country to deliver to them. Um, Little Pod are brilliant at actually sustain, finding uh, sustainably grown vanilla. Um, from all over the world, whether it's Madagascar, wherever you, they, they're getting it from. Um, but the paste here is a is a lovely, pure Madagascar vanilla. And they literally just do that. They just get the vanilla, um, the pod, they open up the vanilla pod, and then they get the, the seeds straight out. So that blackness is the seeds and the contents of the actual vanilla pod. Um, vanillas are not yellow, OK? So it's oddly that, that we should find these little bottles that of vanilla in the shops that are yellow. That's a vanilla flavouring. It's artificial. It's um, made with um, uh, vanillin, which is like a, um, it's like a flavour. It's petrochemical, you know, like putting like petrol petrochemical and we don't want to be putting that in our food. We want to be putting as best we can real vanilla. And now if you can't get real vanilla pods or real vanilla paste, um, then go for um, then go for a real um, extract. Don't go for a flavouring, which is to say this artificial stuff. And there's so much good stuff with vanilla as well. I mean I I bang on about it. It's so much great stuff for it. Um, 
it's been proven by lots of different things. It, like a, it's even a sugar suppressant, so it might help with diets and all those sort of things. But it's got some really great stuff going for it. And when you start the thing, you might think, well, it's a bit expensive. It, it is expensive, but if you think how it's been farmed, that you don't get vanilla farms as such. It's a, it's a, a vanilla plant grows up the side of a tree in a rainforest. So um, it actually grows up and around the trees and it's hand picked. So these ones are hand picked and they're hand pollinated. So you really, um, you, you're paying for quite a lot going on throughout, uh, through, throughout the process of getting that beautiful vanilla taste there. Um, okay, how are we doing? Is that getting warm now? Yeah, starting. It's not quite bubbling, but you can see it steaming away, can't you, in there, which is great. Um, we're, that's what we want to do. We're going to be bringing this up, not quite to the boil. We don't want it quite up to the boil. We're just going to bring that one up just so it's it's steaming, but not bubbling there. We go OK with that one. Yeah. OK, we're we doing electric or hand whisk for the next one. Hand OK, we're going to go hand whisk. So we've got a hand whisk for this time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pour, um, uh, once we've done that, we're going to pour onto the egg mix and we're going to keep whisking it, whisking it, whisking it, whisking it. Why would you need to keep whisking it? What's going to happen to the egg if we just heat up the egg? It will just scrambled. Just scrambled egg. We don't want scrambled egg, we want custard, OK? So we're not looking for scrambled egg, we're looking for custard. All right, are you ready to go with this one? Yeah. All right, um, so Millie's got the hot, um, scalded um, um, milk there, and in it goes. Pour it into the into there, and then quickly. Should I pour and you stir, or you you pour? Uh, I'll stir, you pour. Go on, here we go. So we're going into the bowl there, and we're just going to quickly, 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 stirring away. We don't want scrambled egg. We want beautiful creamy custard. Go on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. All right. So I have now got in there the warm milk. I'm going to pour it back into the pan now. Now back on the heat there, there we go, and we're going to bring that one back up, there we go, just keep stirring that one Millie, keep stirring that one. Now, when stirring, use a stainless steel pan, you can use a metal whisk, uh, sorry, if, if you are using a Teflon coated pan, do not use a stainless steel whisk. If you use a stainless steel whisk on a Teflon pan, you're going to end up with lots of little black bits in your custard, and it's not going to be vanilla. It's going to be the coating of your pan, which you've destroyed. So um, we're using stainless steel pans here, and we're using a metal whisk, which is fine. But please be careful. I do not want those people saying, oh, I've just ruined my Teflon pan with a metal um, uh, metal whisk. Yeah, we're going to do that. So uh, use a silver cup, a rubber whisk if you want to do this in the various different ones you can use there to stir that one up. So a minute at the moment, you can turn the heat up now, bring that one up to the boil when we're doing that one. Um, so uh, we're going to, we're doing it to maintain it on over medium heat and collect, medium, maintain it to medium heat until it gently comes to a, a boil there. And she just keeps on stirring that one all the time. And what's going to happen is it's going to be thickening. So how is it going to thicken? Two ways, remember. The first way it's going to thicken is going to be thickening because um, there is a protein, the eggs in there, and that those eggs are going to cook, or what we call a GCSE denature, and then coagulate. And um, from a uh, from a flour point of view, there's flour in there, and the flour has thickened that as well. All right. So we've got a few different elements going on. Is that starting to thicken? Oh, yeah, look at that, thickened yeah. custard. It's beautiful, yellow, thickened, proper vanilla custard going on there. Um, so that company, that company was called Little Pod, was the one. You can find those on the line. I'll put a little comment on the bottom so you can find them as well. Beautiful, beautiful piece there. And I can see all the vanilla pods in there, little the black seeds from the vanilla in there with the yellow custard. It's beautiful, wonderful. Should we, you, you want to show them? Yep, yeah, okay, we should show them. There we go. If you can see that, you can see that lovely and thick, beautiful, thick. It's just coming up. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. And she's just bringing that one up to the boil on there to make the custard. All right. Do you want to switch that one off now? OK, so we now have got our custard, our creme patissiere made. We've got our laminated pastry made. We need to combine that together. And then we're going to put um, we're going to be putting in some fruit on the top, whatever fruit you've got. I'm going to go with lockdown larder fruit, and I'll show you about some different ideas you can use there for your lockdown larder fruit. Okay, Millie, do you want to go and get that one in the fridge now? Um, yeah. And we'll get that one cooled down. Um, so we're just going to cool that one down for a moment. Um, just going to take that one over, put it in a cool place beside the fridge, um, and um, we're going to put that one in there so that we can have it um, ready to go. I'm just going to move that one out there. 
There we go. Oops. Sorry, we're just clearing a little bit of space there. There we go. OK, you can do that one now then. All right, so while Millie's, um, while Millie's doing that, yourself down and talk to you about fruit. Now say lockdown larder, what can we eat? Where can we get fresh um, for things from? Um, both to add colour and texture, variety to our food when we are in a lockdown situation. Yeah. Okay, um, so this is what we're going to do. Um, there are a number of different ways you can do get fruit into this one. We'd like to do some fruit. So we can a number of different things you can do. Um, you could use fresh strawberries and raspberries, you can get hold of it, but you can also use um, frozen fruits. Um, frozen fruits are going to be fine, you can use some frozen fruits in the forest there, um, or um, you can use canned fruits. Canned fruits is going to be fine as well, so canned fruits or frozen fruits will work just as well for this one. We're going to be using some frozen fruits for that. Um, now, if you can't, haven't got canned fruit or you haven't got frozen fruit and you still want to get some um, some nice uh, colours into these things, you still want to get some sweetness into it, what else could you use? Well, there are a number of different things we can use at the moment. You are obviously allowed to go out for your little local walk and being as we are in, in sunny Devon, but you can forage all over the place, you can find a lot of things out there currently that are available to make things sweet. So uh, primroses, primroses, if you can find those growing on the verge uh, or the banks outside are lovely and sweet and are beautiful with this one. Lots of different colored uh, primrose on the top. Make sure you wash them first, but they've got a sweetness and a color. And you've got some, uh, you've got some nutrition in there as well, which is brilliant from fresh, fresh, um, freshly grown flowers. Like a bit like herbs, I suppose, in that way, if you're looking at those. But let's think of some other things you can forage. Food foraging. And there's going to be a whole thing about food foraging, which we're going to be doing um, at Talkie Girls Grammar coming up soon. But there's lots just coming out at the moment. Other things that are great for this sort of thing and create sweetness. Um, um, what's that trio there, Billy? Blossom. Blossom, yeah. Blossom, we went out and you were up on my shoulders, weren't you? Collecting blossom. And um, blossom is a great one to be able to make a lovely, sweet, colourful, um, uh, complement to your food. It's great in salads if you can, or as a, as a salad there. Um, other things you might be able to find, a uh, wild garlic is growing huge at the moment. Um, so again, if you can find that out. And what's yellow that we've been collecting lots of? Dandelions. Dandelions, yeah, we got dandelions. I've actually got some dandelions here. Um, we've got some dandelions just soaking away. You might just be able to see, let me move the camera down so you can have a look there. Um, so you've got some dandelions soaking your way there. Um, we've been collecting dandelions. So we're making a dandelion jams, honeys and syrups out of those. Um, that's great. Um, so there's all these different things that if you're thinking, well, I can't get hold of um, fruits, frozen fruits, fresh fruits, canned fruits, go out and pick stuff to eat. Um, violets at the moment, beautiful, lovely and sweet. Primroses growing on the side, beautiful, sweet. Dandelions, lovely, wonderful. And these are forage foods, they're free forage foods. You can go out and go out and get your exercise and grab these, get a bag of them, wash them up. Um, get the yellows off the dandelions. Once you've washed them, boil them up, make them in with a bit of sugar, make them into a honey or a syrup or a jam with them. Um, primroses, just eat the primroses. Once you've washed them, eat them. They're lovely and sweet, very colourful on your food. So well worth you doing that as part of your food foraging. So we're going to be doing some more food foraging this afternoon uh, when we go out for our, our little local walk around uh, the house here and around the estate. Brilliant one. They're not weeds, they're food. Hurrah. Um, OK, let's um, let's go get our pastry out, shall we? Yeah. Um, so we've got, um, we're going to go get our pastry out now, which has been nicely chilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be putting it into the pastry. We're going to be um, putting all of this together. So we've got the pastry, we're going to put the creme pat, the pita custard, and then we're going to put some fruits on top and then whack it into the oven. OK, um, so let me just go remind you where we all are on the recipe. Let's send that live now. Uh, here we go. I'm just going to send that one live to you so you can see what we're up to now. So we have done quite a few of the steps there already. Um, we've gone all the way down now to we're at the number 10 point now where we're going to be making this pastry. So what we're going to use is we're actually going to use a few fun little things. So um, in the we've got we've got a few things like um, tuna tins, and um, metal uh, cases, and we're going to be trying to put the R's inside those things. Um, we're going to we're going to get some tuna tins, uh, out some old tuna tins, 
and all two the tins out, and we're going to get some old pastry tra trays, and we'll show you what you can do with them. So again, you might not have all of the equipment. Um, I haven't got all the equipment from school um, that I have at school, so I'm making do um, to put all these together. So let me let me go back to myself and show you what we're doing, what we've got here for you. OK. Um, so we you might not have all the equipment that we got at school and I, so I say I, I certainly don't have everything. So we're making do. We're doing some fun stuff. So tuna tins. Um, you might not have thought of using tuna tins. But tuna tins make great little pastry tart um, pieces, so you're using those. Okay? Um, uh, an old dish from a uh, meat pie that someone gave us left out, uh, yeah, 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 it's useful. Um, but we can use one of these washed up there, a bit of a uh, pie dish to make these in. Or if you can actually do them, you don't need anything, you can just put them onto a tray and make them into shapes. So we can get a pastry cut, we get you know, pastry biscuit cutters there and we can make them into there and do that. So whichever you fancy, we're gonna have a bit of a play with everything on this one um, for the final bit as we put these all together. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to roll out the pastry so it's flat. And Lily, do you wanna have a go at doing that for me? Can roll that one all out for me? So a bit of flour on both sides. Well done, Lily. Let me just move it down so you can see what she's doing there. Bit of flour on both sides. She's just gonna roll that flat. Should be about as flat as a pound coin is what we're looking for, evenly flat. Remember, if you haven't got a rolling pin, just a milk bottle will do fine. If you've got one of those, that's fine. Now, you can't re-scrunch this one up. Okay, it's, you can't do that, that's not gonna work. So you're just gonna have to roll it out and we'll use whatever we can of this pastry to make our beautiful, beautiful rough puff pastry. There we go. So, that's good. A bit, a bit more on this side there, Millie. OK, well done. Perfect. All right. Um, so we've now got a beautiful pastry. Now we can uh, make our little dish. We can do a few different things here. We can make uh, a tart tray um, like this. We can make it just a fat one. Should we just get a slightly smaller one of those? Yeah. you want to get a slightly smaller one? Um, we're going to use this one to fill our um, Little tuna tin, it's a massive big one, and so that means we've got enough to go up the side. We'll put a little circle and then we'll line that one. But we can just do this one. I'm going to show you. Yeah, let's use let's use these ones. Um, so we've got different sizes here, cutters. Now, if you haven't got a cutter, use your tuna tin as a cutter as well. So you can actually use the tuna tin, um, uh, or if you haven't got pastry cutters themselves, think about what you can use at home to do. So do you want to have a go doing using one of those? Do it as close as you can to the edge. Yeah. OK, so we got our first of those. Um, we're going to go and grab the metal tray for these, these to go on just there, Manny, on the floor over there. Um, OK. Now we're going to put a bit of the greaseproof paper onto the tray that we used earlier. Let's reuse that one. So we got the greaseproof paper onto the tray. We're going to put the little circle of pastry onto there. Beautiful. Um, so um, do you want to do another one like that one? Just as close as you can to the edge. Perfect. All righty. All right. Now we're gonna. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to um, just go grab me a fork and that uh, paper over there by the by the sink there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of the custard in there, a little bit of our fruit on there, and then I'm gonna show you how to do some more fun stuff with it. Okay. Um, right. So um, what we're going to do there is we're going to prick the prick the discs and then so prick the discs in the middle. This is only because we don't want it to rise in the middle where we're going to put the creme pack. Yeah, just all the way around the middle bit. Yeah, all the way, leaving a gap around the outside. There we go. So just uh, we go. The same on the other side. Oh, this one. Okay. Now into the centre there, we're going to put our creme pack. And then on the top of the back, we're going to put some fruit. So Millie, go for it. Do you want to go and get the creme pack? Yeah. Um, now, while she's doing that, I'm also going to do some squares and show you some funky things you can do with the squares. You can want to do some square ones, little donishes. So I'm just going to cut out a nice little square from that one. Have you got that, Millie? Is that OK? Yeah. Is it nice and cool now? Yeah, good. Yeah. OK, so use a smaller spoon there. I'm going to just do a little square here. And I'm going to, oops, there we go. Um, now I'm going to move that one over. If you want to put a little spoonful of the creme pack into the centre. Oh, look at that. 
Lovely, nice and thick there. There we go. Um, I should have said at this point, um, we need to have preheated our oven to 190. Don't worry. Do that one. That's probably a little bit too much there. Maybe we'll have to spread that one out a bit. Okay. There we are. Just going to put a dollop of that in the middle. What's the temperature? Uh, so the temperature, good question. It's 190 gas mark five for these ones. Okay. Now we can do some other stuff with them. We've got lots of different ones that go, we can make. We're just going to have a go with it. I'm going to um, show you how to make some um, other ones here. We're going to have a go with making some square ones. So and you can just use a knife now just to cut some square ones while the oven's preheating. We can have a bit of fun with this one. So I'm going to show you how to do one and then Millie can show you. Um, we can have a go at doing lining a tin if you want to have a go at doing one of those. We can do it with a tin and a little tart in there. But let's um, let's let's try and have a go with this one first. So I'm going to make a little square there. Then he's got ready with the creme pack. Now I'm going to just make another. You can see there I've got a square. I'm going to just uh, this is another food teacher showed me this one. It's a, I think it was a Adele, um, another food teacher from up north. So I'm going to just make a little corners little cuts so I'm just so uh, this will become very clear in a minute I'm just making some little cuts that form um, like an L shape into each of the corners and I'll show this up to the camera in a minute and the idea is we're going to stretch the pastry over itself and over the crown pat to make a fancy looking little Danish um, here which is going to be absolutely beautiful and then what we'll do is we'll um, we'll glaze these before we put them in the oven with the egg white that we made from earlier, or we kept that from earlier with a little brush, a little paintbrush, um, or your fingers if you want to use that. Okay, so I've, I've done this. You can just see from the camera's point of view there. Um, I have made little L shapes into each corner. Now, Millie, same as before, we'll just prick it first. And okay, you're going to put a little spoonful of the creme pat in the middle there. Use your finger there, okay. Oh, that is beautiful. OK, now you can lift the sides up. And make yourself. Lift, lift the corners up rather. Where I cut that one. We're going to squeeze them in the middle and make ourselves a little Danish. Um, fancy flower. There we go. We made ourselves a little fancy flower going on in there as well. Um, now we need some fruits. Do you want to grab a couple of bits of fruit? Millie's going to make these look pretty with some fruit. I'm going to cut out another one of these uh, while she does that. Um, yeah, some frozen fruit would be perfect. And maybe two or three or maybe four in each one. Little bit of berries in each one. So while we're doing that one, perfect. There we go. So everyone can see what we're doing. There we go. Millie's going to do, just do some decoration on the top of those. Well, I'm going to cut out some more of these fancy pastries. In fact, you know what we did? We didn't when we did that one. We didn't put any berries inside that one. We'll put some, lift those ones back up, and you can put the berries in first. Yeah. Have some fun with this. Be creative when you're doing your pastries. Have a little bit of fun. Now they're going to be taking about ten minutes. They only take about ten minutes to cook. So, um, yeah, well, just about two or three fruits into each one would be lovely. You can do apples, lovely little apple slices would be really nice seeing these ones. Use whatever fruit you've got, you know, to make do with what we've got in the larder and have a bit of fun with this one. So don't be feel like you you can't do anything with this one. You can, that's, there's so many fruits out there that you even if you can't get fruits from the shop, go do a bit of food foraging. Have a check online what's available, um, what's what, and before you eat it, obviously, and check with a grown up before you eat it, but and make sure it's obviously washed as well. But um, there's so many great bits of food you can forage at this time of year. Um, this is springtime with all these flowers coming out and so many of them are edible. Um, uh, that they, they make a beautiful gorse is another one. We, we're up near Woodbury Common here, so we've got loads of yellow gorse, um, which makes a beautiful, beautiful flavour as well. Um, OK, oh, we're into, on, into the middle of the creme pack. It must be on the creme pack. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I should have said that one. Um, OK, I'm just making another one, a hole through that one. And I'm just going to put that one. So probably just a, yeah, just a couple of those in the middle so they're on the actual. There. Now you can go and get a paintbrush from the um, drawer there. 
really, and then you can put some egg whites on around the outside. There we go. OK, have you got the egg white still, a little bowl of egg white? Yes. Uh, there we are. Yeah. So do you want to brush around the outside of these and then we'll get them into the oven for 10 minutes? I'm going to put a little bit of um, little bit creme pat as well. Can you pass me up the creme pat while you're doing that? Yeah. OK, creme pat's here. I'm going to do a little bit of creme pat while Minnie does that. That creme pat is looking superb. I have never had such a wonderful pasta. Uh, you could put, put a little bit on them, but mainly on the pastry, um, top of the pastry. And then that's good. And then I'm going to have a little bit of fruit in this one again. A little bit of fruit into the middle because we want to try and get some fruit into these for everybody. It's good to have a lot of fruit, especially at this time when we want to try and look after ourselves, look after our health and well being. Okay, I'm just going to. So I'm shaping these ones while Millie's glazing them, ready to go in the oven, while the oven's just preheating at the moment. And like I say, 10 minutes is what I want you to, to be putting them in for, till they're golden brown. And um, I'd love to see some pictures of what you've made today. So please send us in some pictures of what you've made. Um, that'd be great, year nines. There we go. And there's another little pastry there. We're ready to go. We can probably just get one more round rather than doing a tart tray where we'll do a little Doing a couple of little round ones in there just to go on the tray. Finish those ones off. Okay, here we go. We'll just do. You can brush around the outside and I'll put the creme pat in the middle. Okay. Well done. Now, uh, year nines, if you're wondering what to do, not all of you have completed your worksheets from before. So can you make sure you go back into Teams, make sure you've completed all your assignment worksheets if you're still looking for things to be doing. Um, and that would be great. I'm going to just finish off the last bit of our creme pat. There we go. There it goes. And you're going to get a couple of berries into the middle of those, Millie. Mm -hmm. There we go. Beautiful. Squeeze those in onto the creme pat. Wonderful. OK, so we've got a selection there of Danish pastries. We've got some fancy looking ones in here. You can fold them into all sorts of different shapes. We're going to get these now into the oven for about 10 minutes. Preheated oven, you go and do that with Millie. Um, OK, and that is our lesson there on fruit tartlets and creme patissiere with a load of food science whacked in there for you as well. Hopefully you've really enjoyed today's lesson. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put up the last bit of the slide there just to recap of where we're up to. Um, cool people. Um, we're going to be putting those in to... There we go. So uh, this is just a recap on where we're up to. We've just done number 10 there. So number 10 there. Keep you going, Millie. Um, number 10. Sorry. OK. Um, number 10 there. Uh, you can see pricking the bases there. Place your discs, spread the creme with the creme patisse, yeah, and arrange whatever fruit you've got. Now, finally, um, the next thing you need to, to be all doing is um, you need to, oops, let's move through, washing up and clearing up. Can you collect all the equipment you've used? Wash everything up using the right method. Dry with a clean tea towel. Put everything away once you've been checked. Well, not by a teacher, but by whoever's at home, whether it's a parents, grandparents, whoever you've got at home. Make sure they've checked that everything that you've done has been is been uh, ready to go. Okay, and it's nicely clean. I don't want to be told off for having not cleaned up everything. Okay, and um, so please make sure you have done that. Okay, um, so back to us. Um, just like to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's been great to have you on board. So, so thank you for me. Thank you. Thank you for Millie. Um, don't forget at these difficult times, please take care. Please say and stay safe. And we look forward to having you on board for another one of our videos for another one of our cooking classes. Um, here from us at Talking Girls Grammar School or from my house to Talking Girls Grammar School to the rest of the world out there. Thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye.